All right, so today is February 10th. All right, and we're going to take a look at um, some more indeterminate forms and specifically L'Hopital's rule. Okay, so this is section 8 7. All right, so I am kind of skipping around. We were in chapter 7. All right, there's just some things I want to cover before we continue in chapter 7. I want to definitely get this L'Hopital's rule in there. Okay, so. Um, and the spelling of L'Hopital's rules changes every so often. It just depends in the mathematics world, you know, when they are in the mood to change it and argue about how to spell it and all that other kind of stuff. I'm pretty sure our textbook is a pretty old textbook, and that's how it is spelling it. All right, so if you see it spelled a different way on the internet, that's okay because, you know, just different version. All right, let's talk about our indeterminate forms. All right, so indeterminate forms. All right, so I'm pretty sure up to now, the only thing that we have really looked at have been zero over zero. And that was when we were doing the limits as x approaches whatever. And then if you got that indeterminate form of zero over zero, that told you, hey, you had to do some more algebra to figure out what the limit was. All right, we also had done infinity over infinity. I think we have done that one as well. All right, so those are the ones that up to now that we have really encountered a lot. All right, however, there's several more. And um, so now we're gonna go back and we're gonna do it limits, okay? But it's gonna not be one of these indeterminate forms, it's gonna be one of the new ones. And we're gonna have to implement this L'Hopital's rule to be able to do the limit. All right, so another form would be zero times infinity. All right, another one is one raised to the infinity. Another one is zero raised to the zero power. And then infinity minus infinity. All right, so those are now the ones that we're gonna start to encounter. All right, and it was very, um, the way we had done this, I did it very specifically because when we did limits to begin with, I made sure to only give you limits that had these indeterminate forms. I did not give you limits that where you would encounter these. All right, but now, mixed in with all your other limit problems, you will start to see these, okay? Um, now, I, we could write out word for word L'Hopital's rule. All right, I'm gonna kind of summarize it um, so that we're not writing the whole entire thing out word for word. I'll try to hit the highlights, okay? All right, so basically we're gonna have two functions, the f function and g function. They're both gonna be differentiable on an open interval. That's pretty standard for anything. Um, containing C, because our limit is gonna approach C, all right, except possibly at C itself. Um, and then of course we assume that that denominator doesn't equal zero because when it's in the bottom, that never works very good. All right, so basically what's gonna happen here, if I've got the limit as say X approaches C of an F of X, over g of x. Okay, so I'm going to have some type of rational function here. All right, and we're again, g of x cannot equal zero. All right, the derivative of that cannot equal zero. I can't divide by zero. We know that. All right, if I work this limit out, okay, if I work this limit out and I get an indeterminate form, all right, then to be able to continue and figure out what the limit is, we can apply L'Hopital's rule. All right, so here, um, yes, these are all your different forms here, but what if I, let's say I got um, a negative infinity over infinity, all right, that's going to count too. If I got an infinity over a negative infinity, that's going to count negative infinity over negative infinity. All right, so variations of that as well, okay? So just a bunch of variations of that as well. Okay, L'Hopital's rule says, what can we do? Well, we can keep our limit notation. So the limit as x approaches c. And then we're going to take the derivative of the top and we're going to take the derivative of the bottom and then we're going to try it again. And then we'll do a direct substitution, we'll figure it out, and then we'll see, did it actually lead to an answer or did it lead to another indeterminate form? All right, and actually what's going to happen is you're going to see, like if you remember when we did those limits at the very beginning of the year, we had limits where maybe the top was an, I don't know, say an x squared minus one, and then the bottom was an x minus one, and you could factor the top and cross out and then work the limit out. All right, those were nice polynomial curves on the top, polynomial curves on the bottom. 
you can use L'Hopital's rule on those. So you wouldn't have to use the algebraic methods of factoring that we had used earlier in the year. You, are, you can technically use L'Hopital's rule. All right. Um, so there we go here. This is as X approaches C. All right, and we're assuming C is a constant. All right, let me also just make a note here real quick. Um, another form of L'Hopital's rule. So let's say another form. All right, let's say we had the limit as X approaches infinity of F of X over G of X. All right, same thing applies. If I get some um, indeterminate form when I do a direct substitution, I can, again, implement L'Hopital's rule, which would say I'm still taking the limit as X approaches infinity, and then I'm just simply going to take that derivative of that numerator, the derivative of the denominator, and then see where that takes it. All right, so the actual definition that you will find in your textbook starts with X approaching C, all right, but an alternate form also we can do it when X is approaching infinity too. Did not want to forget that part. All right, so, so far, all right, nothing, right? I'm just talking about a bunch of rules here and we haven't applied anything yet. Okay, so let's take a look at some examples. All right. Let's suppose we have the limit as x approaches zero of maybe say an e raised to two x minus one all over x. All right, and I am gonna throw a lot of e's and natural logs in there because now we know those. Okay, and early on, since our book was not early transcendental, we didn't have a lot of those in our limits, but now we're gonna start doing those. Okay, now, what do we do? We always do a direct substitution first, right? So I'm gonna do my direct substitution. I'm gonna plug zero in here. So I'm gonna have e raised to the two times zero, just make that a zero, minus one all over a zero. All right, well, this right here, anything raised to the zero power is always one. One minus one is gonna give me a zero and I've already got the zero on the bottom. So yes, this is my indeterminate form. All right, so indeterminate form. So now we can't do our algebraic methods from earlier. We can't factor, we can't cross out, we can't rationalize the numerator, we can't do all that other kind of stuff. So what we're gonna do is we are going to apply L'Hopital's rule. Okay, so I'm gonna do LH are just so we know what we're doing here. We're going to apply L'Hopital's rule. Okay, now I'm actually going to show lots of notation. I'm going to go back on these first few and I'm going to do that DDX notation just to show what we're doing here. So I'm going to have the limit as X approaches zero. All right, now I want to take the derivative of the top. So I'm going to do DDX of E to the two X minus one all over DDX of X. Now, eventually you'll, you'll not do this. You'll just take that derivative, but here to begin with, I wanna actually show all the work in here. All right, now I must keep my limit notation. Okay, I must keep that limit notation. All right, so derivative on the top here. All right, e to the u, e to the u, u prime, right? So derivative of the exponent there is gonna be a two. So if I take the derivative here, don't let me screw up. I get a two e to the two x. All right, and then derivative of one, goes away. All right, derivative of x is 1. Okay, so technically, I could just leave it like that. Anything over 1 is itself or whatever. So now, what am I ready to do? I've done L'Hopital's rule once. I've got a different function here now. So now I'm ready for my direct substitution. So now I'm going to plug in 0. I'm going to have a 2e raised to the 2 times 0. Well, anything raised to the 0 power is 1. 1 times 2 is 2, I actually have an answer. So I only had to implement L'Hopital's rule once. Okay, all right, so that one was a pretty easy one, pretty straightforward. All right, questions? Are we good on the first, first example here? Pretty good? Okay, I'm going to take silence in our Zoom meeting as a good thing. All right, so let's do one as x approaches infinity because I said that was an alternate form. We could do that as well. So let's do the limit as x approaches infinity and let's go natural log of x over x. Okay, so you always do have to check that um, direct substitution. Okay, you got to do it. So we'll start off right away, see if we can get us an answer here. All right, now I'm going to, as x approaches infinity, 
Okay, so X is getting infinitely large. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and plug in infinity, but then you've got to think of it as, as X is approaching infinity. So I'm gonna write natural log of infinity over infinity. All right, so what this is, is what? I'm taking the natural log of a number that is getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, okay? And then what direction is that going? As I take the natural log of a bigger number and a bigger number and a bigger number, and I just keep doing it over and over, it ultimately approaches infinity, all right? And then as X approaches infinity, this bottom is just going to go to infinity. So it's gonna get infinitely large as well. All right, so again, there's that infinity over infinity, all right, in determinate form. Okay, so that means I've got to try something else. And again, if I look at this, I can't use those algebraic methods that we were doing at the beginning of Calc 1. All right, so I've got to try something else. So I'm going to try L'Hopital's rule. Okay, so L'Hopital's rule. Okay, so that means I'm going to take the derivative of the top and the derivative of the bottom. All right, now I did the DDX notation in the problem on that one. All right, let's try not to do that on this one because I'm hoping that you can just do limit as X approaches infinity. All right, and especially if you note, hey, from here to here, I'm doing L'Hopital's rule. All right, then somebody ought to be able to follow your logic in your, in your work here, okay? So derivative of natural log of X is one over X. All right, and then derivative of X is one. So complex fraction there, make that really big, all right, which is basically just natural uh, one over X there. Okay, so I've simplified it. I've done L'Hopital's rule. So now let's go back to a direct substitution, see what happens, okay? I'm going to basically just plug infinity in for X, but as X is approaching infinity, it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So I've got a one over infinity. Okay, I'm doing that direct substitution. All right, as the bottom keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger, we know this, right? Then this automatically goes to zero. We remember that when the bottom gets really, really big and I got a constant on the top. All right, it goes to zero. So I got a number, so I only had to do L'Hopital's rule once. Okay, is everybody following me this morning? 